Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are back to our journal discussions on liver cancer treatment. The last year has seen many amazing advances in liver cancer management and MRL trials, the MRL 1, 2 and 3, there are three trials on this topic. All of them give new advances in the management of liver cancer. So we have already seen this slide in our previous discussion on the LEAP-012 trial on liver cancer. Basically, most of these trials deal with the intermediate stage HCC as per the BCLC criteria. And this is basically tumors a heterogeneous group. And that is why there is a subdivision of the intermediate stage BCLC that has already been advocated. Size less than 3 centimeter and less than or equal to 3 nodules, we can have curative treatment. Remember that the curative treatment for primary liver cancer is resection, ablation and transplant. All others are not curative treatments. So when we look at this classification and response to taste, we know that lesions more than 7 and lesions more than 6 centimeters are basically going to be taste refractory or may have poor response to taste. So it is this subgroup where we are trying to discuss if combination therapies of taste that is embolization with systemic therapy or immunotherapy gives any advantage over taste alone. So when it comes to MRL1 study design, again, it is basically childbug A or B7 VP3 and VP4 are excluded. No prior systemic therapy or taste is a inclusion criteria, not amenable to curative therapy, very clearly mentioned, and no extrahepatic disease. In these patients, it has divided the trial recruitment into three arms. Arm A is Durvalumab plus taste, followed by Durvalumab plus placebo for bevacizumab and second arm is durvalumab plus taste versus durvalumab plus bevacizumab and third arm is placebo for durvazumab plus taste and placebo for durva as well as beva okay so in the third arm basically it's a taste only arm arm b is durva plus taste vis-a-vis -vis durva plus beva Okay, so you have to understand the arms, okay, because that is how you can implement the trial in your practice. So, arm C, placebo for Durva basically means that there is no Durva Luma in that arm. So, it stays only, okay. When it comes to arm B, it is taste plus Durva and Durva Beva, okay. And arm A is taste plus Durva, Durva alone. Right, So this is how the three different arms have been designed in MRL1 trial. Primary endpoint is progression-free survival. Secondary endpoints include arm A versus arm C progression-free survival, whereas primary endpoint is arm B versus arm C. So we are looking at the benefit of Durva Beva versus Tes alone. Right. And there are secondary endpoints which are beyond this, but the key primary endpoint is progression-free survival for arm B versus arm C. So when we discuss this, the progression-free survival, Durva Beva taste, that is the arm B, and placebo plus taste or taste alone, the primary endpoint, you can see that the median PFS was improved by 6.8 months. So the median is 15 versus 8.2 for taste alone. So definitely the combination has helped. When we look at the difference in the secondary endpoint, that is arm A versus arm C, right? There is no beva, you can see in the title. So this is arm A versus arm C. The difference was not statistically significant. So if you understand this, you can see that MRL1 was studying Tes Durva Beva, which the triple combination showed better outcomes compared to Tes alone, as well as compared to Tes plus Durva Luma alone, right? So the triple therapy has worked better. 
Similarly, we have seen the lib 012 trial and you know that lib 012 was taste plus lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab. If you have not seen the video, you can have a look. Again, the triplet showed a better outcome. So these trials are hinting towards an area where triple therapy and not taste alone may give you better outcomes than taste alone in intermediate stage HCC. Remember that the inclusion is very specific that the patient is not suitable for curative therapy. So if the patient is suitable for curative therapy, we should not even be discussing taste or systemic therapy as an option in the upfront scenario, right? Other trials in this direction, there is taste plus nivolumab, that is taste 3. Then we have telentase, that is taste plus atezolizumab plus bevacizumab, again a triplet versus taste. And you have atebeva versus taste, that is ABC HCC. All these trials are for intermediate stage HCC. Going to MRL3 trial design, again for intermediate stage HCC, it, it is taste plus durvalumab, tremelimumab and lenvatinib versus taste alone, right? So this is the trial. Again, it has three arms, but the primary comparison is going to be the first arm and the third arm. So you can see the DLT taste, that is the first arm. Then there is no lenvatinib. There is only durvalumab, tremelimumab and taste. And then there is taste alone. So these are the three arms. And we are going to again see the survivals in these three groups. So this is MRL3 trial. The one that we discussed in detail in this video is MRL1. Understand that all these trials change practice. So it is important that you understand which trial you are applying, right? Currently, we don't have trials that compare triplets versus triplets. We are just trying to see if plain taste works or combining taste with systemic therapy works, right? So that is where we have reached currently. MRL2 is left, right? So to complete this article, MRL2 is not a trial for intermediate stage HCC. So this is important to remember. MRL2 is an adjuvant setting therapy, okay? And the eligibility criteria is a person who has been successfully rejected or ablated. Imaging has confirmed a disease-free status within 28 days prior to randomization. So this is an adjuvant setting therapy. Remember that MRL 1 and 3 are for intermediate stage HCC where curative therapy is not possible. Whereas MRL 2 is for adjuvant therapy in HCC. And we are seeing a randomization between Durvalumab and Bevacizumab treatment versus Durvalumab alone versus only placebo, right? So three arms again, and we are randomizing the patients one is to one is to one in placebo, Durva and Durva Beva combination. Stratification will be done to understand risk factors, right? That is how the trials help. Say microvascular invasion, yes or no. Even our group has a paper where we have seen that microvascular invasion leads to poor survivals, especially in large HCC. So in this trial also, the stratifications based on high risk factors, that is microvascular infiltration and portal vein invasion, VP1, VP2 versus none, right? So that is how MRL2 is designed and it is for adjuvant therapy in HCC. The primary endpoint is recurrence-free survival for arm B versus arm C. And secondary endpoints, you are doing different permutations and combinations of arms A, B and C. Thank you.